chair now recognizes the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. DeFazio, for five minutes. This will be a parable uh, to greed and modern predatory capitalism. We used to have the most efficient, reliable freight network in the world. Freight was delivered safely, at a reasonable rate, on time. They have large skilled workforce, reasonably compensated, and the railroads were all moderately profitable. Then came Hunter Harrison, now deceased. He thought there was something wrong with this. He took over CSX. There's something wrong here. He invented precision scheduled railroading, which is anything but. He slashed the workforce, started running trains that were four and five miles long. They don't have sidings that are that long, so they block intersections all across the country. New ways, found new ways to gouge the customers with a host of new fees and jacked up rates. And as a side effect, as the agriculture, energy, and construction customers have all testified to the Service Transportation Board, delayed deliveries, disrupted businesses, increased costs, which ultimately get passed on to consumers. But he accomplished his goal. Profits are up. And the last decade, uh, railroads bought back $230 billion worth of stock and dividends. Uh, in 2021, it was $26 billion in dividends and buybacks and $29 billion in profits. And the CEOs, like the now gone Hunter Harrison, uh, they're making out like bandits. They all earn $16 million a year average or more. And the Wall Street jackals, well, they're just thrilled with the stock price. Uh, Warren Buffett was bragging on making $6 billion last quarter with BNSF, the, which has become the most abusive railroad in the system. They used to be the best. They were the star. I don't know what happened. Last week, we had to legislate here on the floor of the House. 115,000 rail workers have gone three years without a contract. The railroads were intransigent. They couldn't afford pay raises. What? Oh, and no paid sick time. Oh, we couldn't do that. Uh, they testified to the Presidential Emergency Board that record profits were, quote, not due to any contribution by labor, end quote. I guess the trains run and maintain themselves. Despite massive layoffs, 600% uh, increase in productivity, the remaining workforce, uh, I guess it's their just fabulous business acumen that's making all this money. Because they cut the workforce to the bone, they're particularly adamant that there can be no paid sick time. Well, no sick time at all. In fact, uh, the, uh, they're forcing workers to come to work sick, fatigued, in an industry where one little mistake will lose you a limb or it might cause a catastrophic accident. There's 60% increase in the violations of, uh, of time by the, uh, by the railroads. Uh, if they gave all the workers, all the workers, seven days paid leave, it would take one cent off of their profits. One cent out of all of those profits per, uh, per million. Last week, the House voted to lock in the tentative agreements that provide uh, historic pay raises, uh, do uh, guarantee reimbursement for work expenses, and they prevented a massive disruption. The House also voted to impose seven days of paid sick leave. 221 members of the House, only three Republicans, pretty pathetic guys, Pretty pathetic. Congress took action because we recognized who makes this country great? Who makes it run? It's frontline workers. Without them, just under one third of our country's freight would sit idle. It's time for the railroads to face the music. Precision scheduled railroading is an abject failure. Your service is atrocious. You treat your workers with no respect. 
Don't come crying to the Federal Railroad Administration and Congress to bail you out for your ineptitude, greed, and profit-taking. If you can't provide your workers with paid sick time because you don't have enough people working, well then, maybe the CEOs can take a shift in the rail yard to cover them. It's time for this to end. Unfortunately, it didn't last week because the Senate overrode us. I'd like to thank my staff who worked so hard on this legislation last week. Uh, Oka Mahar Piersma, Andrea Wobler, Francis Bourne, Catherine Ambrose, Alice Koth, Jill Harrison, and Kathy Dedrick, and all the other fabulous members of my team. Uh, with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Chairman, time has expired.